Hello, welcome to this video. I'm PDS the Twitter. This is physics on work, energy, and power. So, I have a question that says a 2 kg stone is dropped from a top of a 20 meters tall building, as shown. Now, I'm going to draw how the diagram is like a little bit. Okay, so this is a stone, then this is the height of the building, which is 20 meters. Then it's dropped somewhere here down here. This is a floor. Now, uh, the mass of this is 2 kg. Taking into consideration that the value of G on F is 10 newtons per kg. Says what is its potential energy at this height? So you need to know that potential energy given by mass times gravity times height. The mass is 2 kg times the gravity is 10 newtons per kg and the height is 20 meters so what we have you have 20 times 20 which is 400 joules 400 joules b says what is its kinetic energy at this height now they're talking about this height at this when it's still here if you're at this point it has got a potential energy of 400 joules. Kinetic energy can't be the same as 100 to be 0 joules. Because kinetic energy is not associated with height. So where you have maximum potential energy, you can't have again maximum kinetic energy. It is 0. That's so zero. That's 0 joules. So kinetic energy. So K, K, A, K, E, sorry, is equal to 0 joules. What is its kinetic energy as it hits the ground? Now it has come down now. It has hit the ground. What is its kinetic energy? Now the whole potential energy which it had on top there will be converted into kinetic energy at this point. So at C we are saying kinetic energy will just be equal to this here. 400 joules. All the energy, all the potential energy it had at this point will be converted into kinetic energy when it, as long as it reaches the ground. With what velocity will it hit the ground? How do you find the velocity of a uh, of a, uh, an object in terms of energy? So, velocity is equal to the square root of 2 g times height. So we have square root of 2 times g is 10 height is 20 so you have 2 times 10 times 20 you are having the square root of what 400 what's the square root of 400 is 20 so your velocity is 20 meters per second if you want you can't use this but keep in mind that you have 20 meters per second you can use this method so let me just rub here since we know that kinetic energy is equal to 4 400 joules we can use the formula for kinetic energy to find velocity. So say kinetic energy is equal to half mass b squared. We have kinetic energy here 400 is equal to half. Mass is 2 kg. Velocity we don't know. So what we have here when you cross multiply it will be 2 times 400 which is 800 is equal to 2 times 2 b squared beside. 2 times b squared you get to b squared over 2 over 2 so velocity squared will be equal to 400 now you know that to remain with v we need to introduce a square root so that you cancel there and there you cancel so your velocity will be equal to 220 meters per second so you see that just the same even even when you use this formula then question 45 that says define power what is power power is just the rate so power is the rate rate at which energy is used up or you can say it's a rate at which work is done and all these are uh, their, their all definitions for power. 
Calculate the power required for a force of 10 newtons applied to move a 10 kg box at a speed of 20 meters over a frictionless surface. Now you need, you need to know that power is equal to NH or work done over time taken. And in this case, look, looking at what we've been given, we have 10 newtons. We also have mass of 10 kg. And we have this, so we have mass. Let me see this. I can rub this side since we already have that. So we are saying we are saying power is equal to work over time or its energy over time. Okay. Or power is equal to force times speed. You can also find power using those. In this case, calculate the power required for a force 10 for a force 10 newton applied to move a box of 10 kg at a speed of 2 meters per second. So we need force in this case. Now we have a total force of 10 newton and 10 kg that side. So we have 10 newtons and 10 kg. Take it, take in mind that. So now what are we going to have? We don't have time here. So in short, we are going to use this force times speed. So force in this case, we have a force of 10 watt of 10 newton there times the speed is 2 meters per second. So the power becomes 20, 20 watts. You only use the force being applied, not the force of the object. A machine can lift 200 kg to a height of 100 meters in 20 seconds. What is the use of power? Now here we have time. On this question we have a mass of 200 kg. We have distance of 100 meters. We have time which is 20 seconds. All right. Now we know that power is equal to work done over time taken. Work is mass, work is force times distance. So in, in, in this case, we have 200 here, mass. How can we convert this 200 into force? We multiply by 10 gravity. Then we have times this 100 here to give us work done. Over time taken is 20 seconds. So you have 2,000 2, times 10 times 100. So in short, we are saying 2,000 times 1,000, you get 2 million. You divide by what? 20. So this is 0 and that 0 goes. 2 here is 1. 2 here is what is 1. So your power becomes 100,000 watts. Differentiate gravitational potential energy from elastic potential energy. Now, gravitational, let, 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 let me just explain. Gravitational potential energy is the potential energy due to gravity, while elastic potential energy is the energy, is the potential energy due to deformation of objects. For example, a spring. A spring has potential energy, all right? That's because it's an elastic. All right? Anything that can stretch or that can be complex has got elastic potential energy. But anything due to height, it has got what to call gravitational potential energy and is usually affected by what? By gravity. So thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you in the next video.